Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today, we're going in depth into the coronavirus versus flu versus smoking versus 5G to let you guys know the numbers behind the numbers you're seeing right there. I'll give you guys a bit of context as to what the hell is going up in the world. So first up, I've got right here. This is a map, map right there saying that there's 300,000 confirmed cases of coronavirus. More importantly, you can see that the total deaths is almost 15,000. Now, to give you a bit of context there, let's compare it with the flu. The flu right now eats up around half a million people worldwide. That's it, deaths from the flu, half a million people. So we've got, whew, what is that? That's a 20, 25x jump to go before we're at flu level of mortality. But that's not good enough. We wanna go a bit more in depth, see how the next two weeks are looking and comparing them a bit more side by side. So I've got these nice charts for you. Looking at America, if we did nothing over the next 14 days, the infection rate that would grow to over 400,000 infected. However, thanks to the policies coming out, lockdowns, all that stuff, separation, this is why separation is very important. If we do that, we're gonna start maturing in the outbreak. We're gonna be more going from being infected every three days to more like six days following where Italy is at its stage right now. And you can see right now, we've dropped the infection rate from 400,000 to 200,000. We've halved it purely by socially segregating ourselves. I mean, I've already gone ahead and deleted some of my Facebook friends. I'm kidding. You need to actually, you know, separate yourselves out, ignore people, wash your hands, do all that kind of nice stuff to help control this virus. But to help you guys put the numbers in context, in the flu season, it's infected. 36 million Americans, that's right, 36 million. So at this stage in 14 days time, we're doing well, we're doing well, everything's good in the world. However, what's more interesting, if we apply the infection rate of flu and 5G into the model. So if we're starting all four measures at the same time, seeing the growth rate, you can see that number one, the flu is far more infectious at this stage. 5G, even the rollout of 5G, that's growing by 100,000 every single day, in case you didn't know that. That's more infectious than where we're going to be with coronavirus, even if we stop socially segregated. Now, the risk, of course, is if we don't do anything in 30 days time, if we're continually to double our numbers every three days, you can see right there, coronavirus has grown to almost 24 million, 24 million infections. That's almost the same amount of infections smoking has on our society. That's right. 23 million Americans smoke. Yeah, very, very bad. So you don't want to get to that level, of course. It's not close to the flu, but you can see it's skyrocketing and we wanna avoid that. And more importantly, we're gonna go into something a bit more, more interesting and that is the mortality rate. So you can see right there on this chart, if we did nothing, if no measures were put in place, if the borders weren't closed, if we weren't being socially segregated, that kind of stuff, it's gonna skyrocket in the next two weeks to 30,000 deaths. And that is, that is a big, big number there. However, with social segregation, hopefully we can get this doubling down from every two days to every five days, following how Italy's doing. We can see Italy's a couple of weeks ahead. By just doing that, we've lowered the death rate. We've lowered it all the way down to less than 8,000, just purely by segregating ourselves out for the next couple of weeks. Sounds, sounds great, you saved so many lives. And that gets us below the second-hand smoke-related deaths. That's right, today, if we model this stuff out, from the beginning of the year, 14,000 deaths have occurred purely to secondhand smoke. This isn't the smokers, this is secondhand smokers. So that's where we are with the numbers. Of course, if we introduce flu, we can see that flu is a lot higher. It's already wiped out 23,000 Americans today. Now, coronavirus, if we did nothing, you can see that it's breaking the limits of flu. We're getting a worse, worse mortality rate than the flu if we did nothing. However, with social segregation, you can see that we've limited the numbers to 8,000 and below. Good. And the biggest killer, of course, is smoking. That's right, smoking kills. It's already wiped out almost 180,000 Americans. 180,000 Americans this year has been caused due to smoking. Of course, coronavirus is nowhere near that level. However, the biggest risk is if we do nothing right now and the numbers continue to double in 30 days time, look at this. This is not going to happen. I'm pretty sure, 100%, this is not going to happen, but you're looking at 8 million deaths. So these policies that are being put in place to tell you guys, hey, do not go to these events, do not mix, wash your hands, do all this stuff, it's actually highly effective. Because if you can get the numbers from doubling every other day, if you can get it down to what Italy is right now, 
Italy is every five days. And if you get it down to all the way to Japan, that's 10 days. If you get it down to South Korea, China. If you don't believe the China numbers, jump out to South Korea. They're very, very mature in their cycle. If you get it down to those levels, you're saving millions of lives. So guys, in case you don't know, make sure you socially segregate, make sure you wash your hands, because as you can see from these models, it really saves countless of lives. Now, regarding moving forward, where we're gonna go in a society, right now we're at lockdown, and we're doing this lockdown to avoid that nightmare, eight million situation, we do not wanna go there. But what happens when we get this situation control? A lot of people are a bit worried, what are we gonna do, we're gonna be in quarantine forever? No, the answer is no. The flu, right now, 75% of all deaths are for people aged 65 plus. And there's a 15% of that is for people aged 50 plus. Most of the younger people aren't susceptible to the illness of the virus. Now they can be carriers of the virus, yes. So logically, it sounds to me what's gonna happen is we're gonna get this situation under control over the next two weeks. We're gonna lock it down, get it under control. What we're gonna do after we get everyone under control, we're gonna allow the people who aren't susceptible to the negative effects of this coronavirus, we're gonna let them back out into society. That's like the 50 underneath, people that don't have high blood pressure, the people that do not have diarrhea, they're gonna be let loose. Society's gonna start up again and we're gonna keep an eye on this situation and anyone that is at risk, we're gonna be making sure that they're safe because even today, again, as you can see, anyone over 65, they're highly susceptible to severe consequences from the flu. So I reckon things are gonna be on the up. You might disagree with me, you might be one of those doomsday sayers, but I think we've pretty much got this situation under control. Thankfully, all the governments have locked down their borders. All the governments have said, yo, social segregation, keep your distances. And together, if we do do this, we're gonna get this situation under control and we're gonna be home free and hopefully getting some scientists to research why the hell this happened. And for those of you guys wondering about 5G, well, so far to date that we know of, 5G hasn't killed anyone. So please, I tell you guys, all you conspiracy theory people out there, I am a scientist too, and I like thinking about stuff. But guys, if you ruin the credibility of the potential negative health effects of 5G today by linking it to this virus that is causing these issues, potentially it might have helped mutate the virus to jump on humans, you can go with that angle, that's fine. But if you start linking it, saying that it's a viral, that 5G is killing all these people and it's not actually a virus, What's gonna happen in five to 10 years time where there's an uptick in brain cancer or in some rubbish like that? What's gonna happen when we start saying it could be linked to 5G? What's gonna happen? People are gonna ignore us because they're gonna say you guys are a bunch of 5G nuts. So please do not tarnish the name of scientists and the whole potential health effects of 5G by linking it to something that clearly isn't 5G. Yes, if you want to say maybe 5G helped mutate the virus, say that if you want, that is realistic, but don't say 5G is directly causing these health effects, don't say that. And also one interesting theory, I just wanna say this right now, I'm gonna say it, it's really good. Um, it was actually by F Stoppers Patrick, he put the dots together, but it kinda of makes sense. One of the symptoms of coronavirus is diarrhea. 50% of people in a recent study in Wuhan said they had diarrhea. And I guess if you are having diarrhea, you probably need toilet paper. So probably a lot of the people that had diarrhea ran for toilet paper and then everyone started copying the show. And about two weeks ago, my wife, she's a doctor, she saw a, a, a drastic uptick of patients suffering from gastroenteritis, that is uh, diarrhea. And I myself, I gotta admit, I had some diarrhea. And obviously, no one's really being tested for this coronavirus. I bet the number of cases that are being studied, there are 100 times more people having this, uh, this illness than what's being actually tested for, because no one is doing the tests and the governments are saying people who have been in contact with Wuhan residents, that kind of stuff, that's how it all started. So guys, I just wanna know how many of you guys out there have been suffering from diarrhea because potentially we might already all have it and we're on the end of this bell curve and things are gonna be looking good. Hope you guys found this video useful. Please, as always, make sure you drop a comment in the comment section below to let me know if you've been having gastro, diarrhea, that kind of stuff in the comment section below. I'm very interested and uh, hope you found this video useful.